Hello guys, hello guys, hello guys. Welcome back to BST African Electronics Surgery on a Monday. And uh, let's continue our lessons. Uh, we've done some little bit of theory about. Uh, I spent like uh, 20 minutes explaining the, the, the fundamental or the, the, the foundation of electronics is lying on Ohm's law. So we need to move on so i spent like the whole week trying to find a way to move to move forward because from the comments i can see a lot of people they don't really know what's really going on on the, on repairs especially on laptop motherboards so I thought of uh, doing like a online crash course starting from zero to the last point of repairs in laptops, okay? Because on TVs and and so forth, we don't have too much repairs there. It's like uh, on, on phones, you are changing. Most of the faults is like LCD replacement, battery replacement, Digitize our charging ports and on TVs we have a few things to replay to, to repair there. Anything related to power on a switching power supply on TVs these days. Otherwise on the digital part you you can't fix anything. It's so hard to fix the 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 digital side of electronic but when power supplies yeah 90 percent or 80 percent of the faults are fixable so we have to explain a few things let's go back in time and explain everything about laptop motherboards so I will do a little bit of uh, theory and then we'll, we'll do the practical. It's a combined uh, lecture, both theory and uh, practical, okay? So the first lesson, so let's start with a little bit of theory lesson number one lesson number one lesson number one what are we going to explain on lesson number one Our main focus or the main aim of this uh, tutorial is to to explain everything related to laptop motherboard repair, mainly the hardware part. Okay. So by the end of these lessons, you will know everything about the laptop motherboards. You know what to check. You know all the power rails, rails on laptop motherboards. You know the necessary voltages or the conditions for for the laptop to start up. So lesson number one, I'll explain uh, about the input circuit 19 volts power rail that is the the first uh, lesson for today we will explain about the input circuit the 19 volts power rail Let's continue now with our lessons. So, 
that the first lesson we want to explain about the input circuit the 19 volts parallel where our 19 volts from the charger to the laptop motherboard is going and or is being distributed that's very important to know how your 19 volts is being used by the the motherboard because most of the laptop motherboards are the same except for the few maybe macbooks yeah i think there are slightly difference maybe in that way you need schematics but in most of the laptops motherboard they can be fixed without schematics so I will explain how I see the, the laptop schematics, okay? So here, we have the charging port, and that the plus, so we have our 19 volts, that the plus here we have our first MOSFET we have our second MOSFET four pins together here three pins together and that's our gauge on the other side three pins together our gate four pins together on the output that the first MOSFET M to the power one M to the power two that the second MOSFET our 19 volts the plus is going through the first MOSFET second MOSFET after that we have a low ohms current sensor or a resistor maybe 0 0.5 0 0.5 to maybe around uh, 0 0.9 ohms very low ohms current resistor or current sensor the minus is going to ground so there's no need to explain about the minus so most of the laptop motherboards will find this kind of configuration on the input circuit 19 volts first mosfet second mosfet current sensor and from this point that's our vcc from this point our voltage is going all over the motherboard okay so what these MOSFETs are doing, they are acting exactly as switches. In case of over voltage, under voltage or a short circuit, they are there to cut down the power to prevent any further damage on the motherboard. That's the main reason why those MOSFETs they are there. Can be channel N MOSFET or a channel P MOSFET that's the configuration that you can found on the input so the good question is how do we found these MOSFETs these two MOSFETs you put a mount meter on, a, on the beep mode the diet mode you check from the plus pin of the 19 volts on the charging port from the plus pin we check where your voltage is going because these MOSFETs they are next to the charging port in most cases if you see two MOSFETs without coils probably those are the 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 mon, the, mo, the input MOSFETs we check with the beep if you see all those pins the plus of from the plus of the charging port they are going to the input of this MOSFET 
probably that the the MOSFET. You check the output. You try to look for the second MOSFET with the beep. If there's any link, like zero resistance, the link it means clearly that's the 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 second MOSFET and from the second MOSFET I'm sure you see a current sensor there a low ohms resistor because the the, the charging I see has to know what is going on on the input so there is a current sensor there so here four pins together that the so that the four pins together drain source and gauge that the drain four pins together that the drain let me check hopefully that the name let me check uh, MOSFETs pin out configuration Four pins together. You can see here four pins together. Pin number five, six, eight. Drain. Three pins source and another one gate. That's clear. So that's the thing. So four pins drain. Three pins source and our gate. The gate is going to some kind of charge power management chip for a charging IC it can be BQ. We find a different configuration here. Let's call it BQ. BQ chip on the input circuit. So the gate is going there. And uh, Before the current sensor is also communicating with the chip. After the current sensor, there is also communication with the chip. What this chip has to know how much current the motherboard is taking. So, here. Yeah. That's where most of the problems come from. Most of the problems, 99% are related to the input circuit. So, most of the problems comes from here because obvious that the main power rail you find many voltage you find i found the main 19 volts power shorted to ground if you check here on the output of the second mosfet to ground you put your test meter on diet mode if you check to ground and if you if you hear a beep that means the main 19 volts power rail is shorted to ground. Or if you plug in the charger, you check here on the input, you have 19. On the output of the second MOSFET, you have 19. On the input, you have 19. But here, you have zero. Check with the 
put your mouth meat on tight, mouth check to ground. In most cases, we have a shorted part here. Or in some cases, I found the first MOSFET is on the input is good 19, but on the output is zero. You come with the power supply on here, you skip all these MOSFETs, you come with power supply here, you supply voltage, and uh, you can't see the short. What I'm doing, I'm jumping with a wire from this point to the, car to the current sensor, because this is just a wire. You can jump with a wire from here to here, if your motherboard is, everything is okay, your laptop will still work the fine. But in most cases, the reason why this MOSFET is not driving 19 volts, check this one. The second MOSFET, maybe have a shorted second MOSFET. So, that's how things work on the input circuit. So, after the current sensor, we have some capacitors connected to ground. We have two, three. These are called ceramic capacitors. The one side is connected to 19 volts and the other side is to ground. After the, the ceramic capacitors, we have like a switching power supply. So here we have a, like a switching power supply, like what I said, four pins together. We have a, three pins here. This is drain. We have our gate. We have another MOSFET. Three pins. That's our gate. Four pins here connected to ground. The gates, we have two gates here. All of them, they are going again to the chip. These are exactly working as switches. So, switching up, up, down, up, down, up, down. Exactly as switches, switching up, down, up, down, we create the voltage here, because on the out here, we have coil, that's our coil, that's the coil, switching up, down, up, down, up, down, This the other one is switching to ground, it's connected to ground, so, this happened like a, maybe 40,000 times per second. Very fast. We create voltage here. And uh, we have coil. After the coil, we have um, we have the feedback. That the FB was this power management chip has to know what is happening on the output. So, so they use feedback here. That the resistor, the current sensor, we use sensing if everything is right on the output of the power supply. After that, we have the electrolyte capacitor. That's the capacitor, the other side is ground, the other side is on the plus. And then, what do we have? We have the battery connector. The B plus, B minus, that's the B minus, and B plus. Here, 
we have 3.3 .3 volts to charge the battery. That's uh, the configuration on new laptops nowadays. We have a switching power supply here to charge the battery. The power from the battery is going like this. From the plus is going like this. And here we have a MOSFET here. Four pins together. Three pins and the gate which is also going to the chip. The source the power from the battery is going to this straight to the main to the main 19 volts power rail and to the rest of the motherboard. So if you plug in your your laptop charger, the power is going this way, this way to the battery. And uh, if you are using the battery power, your power is coming from the battery to the motherboard. That's how the thing. Uh, that's how things works. So that's the input circuit on laptop motherboards. I don't want to to explain other power rails because if I if I try to add up, I can end up messing up things. Because the whole idea is to move step by step so that uh, everyone will get to understand what's going on on laptop motherboards. So the first stage or the first step is to master the input circuit, the 19 volts power rail from the charging port to the battery. We we'll explain about other power rails, but today let's focus on this on the input circuit. So, if you check with your multimeter plug in the charger, you check you don't have 19 volts, try to find out why you don't have 19 volts. That's the why. Uh, that's, that's the reason why, in most cases, I emphasize people to use power supplies. Try to buy a power supply because you can come on the current sensor here with a multimeter and you check to ground with a multimeter, and there's no short. Still, we don't have 19 volts on on the rest of the motherboard. But coming on the same point with a power supply, you see that the power rail is shorted. I've seen that in many times. You come with the test meter, according to the test meter, there's no short, but you supply power, you see, oh, your motherboard is taking power. Because under normal circumstances, the standby current on a non working motherboard. I think it should be around the uh, let's say for from uh, zero let's say ten ten milliamps to maybe forty forty milliamps from ten to forty milliamps that should be enough for That should be enough for a standby current. But if you come with the power supply here and you see maybe 150, it's taking 150 milliamps or 200 milliamps, you check, you see nothing is getting hot. Probably you have a problem with 3.3 and 5 volts power supply, which is always on. But we will explain, we will explain about that. That is our, 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 our second lesson. The 3.3 and 5 volts power rail, which is always on. But today, we are only focusing on the 19 volts power rail. So, 
let's grab some few motherboards here i think i have some motherboards when you try to identify the, the input circuit and try to identify the input circuit that's it i think this is a lenovo we have the charging port here that's the charging port and uh, we have a big power rail you see this one that the first mosfet is driving 19 volts and after the second mosfet we have the second mosfet and the current sensor here that's the input circuit and uh, the power supply to charge the battery i think it's under this heat sink okay yeah that bq you can see this chip that's the bq chip we have the coil two mosfets output capacitor which is going straight to charge the battery because here we have the battery connector let's look for more motherboards We have the this one I think is an HP motherboard the battery connector the charging port connector we have a first MOSFET a big one a small second MOSFET that's the current sensor here and here we have the 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 coil and we have a two MOSFETs a bigger one and a smaller one i think that the the switching power supply to charge the battery i think that's that the power supply to charge the battery coil no mosfets are on the other side we have like two mosfets here on the other side in the driver and the uh, here you can see this this mosfet this is the mosfet which is driving the power from the battery if you are using the battery only without the charger you know what let's look for many motherboards We have any i think this is a hp motherboard we are just uh, trying to identify the input circuit we have the charging port first mosfet second mosfet they are connected in serial mode after that we have the the current sensor from this point our voltage is going everywhere it's going to the RAM voltage, to the G P PCH, to the processor, graphics, to the USB ports, to the hard drive. From the VCC, our voltage is going all over the motherboard. I don't see anything difficult here. Charging port, first MOSFET, second current sensor and from this point is going everywhere if you check here we have like three coils and i believe this first two coils we have two coils and four MOSFETs. i think that's the 3.3 and 5 volts power supply in this coil we have like two MOSFETs coil and uh, where's the driver here that the driver on the other side of the board that the switching power supply to charge the battery was here we have the battery connector okay the power from the battery if we check here on the other side we have this single mosfet here 
that the MOSFET, that this MOSFET which we explained about this one, if you are not using the charger and you are using the battery voltage, the power is coming through this MOSFET to the rest of the motherboard. That's the one here. Yeah. Okay. Let's look for more motherboards. What do we have here? We have an ASA motherboard. We still have a charging port here. That's the charging port. On the other side. On the other side, we have like a two MOSFETs connected in serial mode. First MOSFET, second MOSFET. And uh, our current sensor is on the other side. Based on experience, because uh, I've been fixing these motherboards for a long time, so I most of the motherboards I know how the power is being distributed from the charging port to the motherboard. So here we do have a current sensor here. You see this black thing? From this point, our voltage is going everywhere. So you see all these different motherboards, but the configuration is almost the same. Okay, the ESA one. I think I forget to ex to to identify the the switching power supply to charge the battery. You can see a big coil here. So let's continue with our explanation. So that the ESA motherboard. You can see here we do have a coil that the battery connector. If we check on the other side, we have like a two small MOSFETs BQ that the charging. I see the controller of the switching power supply in the power from the battery. We have this single MOSFET. So, so easy. Another motherboard which I don't know, maybe some kind of HP. Charging connector, first big MOSFET, second one, current sensor. Here we have the battery connector on the other side. You can see. Here we have a switching power supply, two MOSFETs coil, and the driver to charge the battery. And the power from the battery. We have this MOSFET here. If we see this coil has got, we have it's surrounded like a three MOSFETs, and I believe this one, which is on the other side alone, I think that the MOSFET, which is supplying power from the battery to the motherboard. So that's how things works. You see, we explained uh, about so many things on the input circuit, different motherboards, but uh, the schematics is almost the same. So that's what we have to do. We have to read a mother book, motherboard like a, like a book. You have to know everything what's going on there. So I think. Uh, This, uh, this lesson can be helpful to someone who is on the beginner side, but to someone who is already in this repairs for a long time, maybe it's some kind of boring video. But uh, to some other people can be useful, okay? So I'll stop this video now. That's the first lesson, the input circuit. Our second lesson will be explaining about uh, 3.3 and 5 volts power supply. I think that's clear. That's clear. So that's how I see the schematics on many motherboards.
that's how I see, I see the schematics let me see maybe we have a schematics like a real schematics let me see maybe we can get something let's see here Do you have a schematics yes for ESA? Let's look for power supplies. Power supplies. Power supplies. volts and 3.3 yeah exactly what I told you this is an ASA motherboard schematics V in you can see this V in uh, edit uh, maybe I can't do it I can't I can't do it here but exactly what I told you have the V in first MOSFET that's AD 4407 a which is based on the configuration that's a channel p mosfet another channel p mosfet we have a current sensor and uh, here that the driver for this switching power supply which is charging the battery you can see b a double t plus that the battery connector here and the power from the battery connector is going straight to this MOSFET after this MOSFET to the rest of the motherboard exactly what I told you so that's the thing so let's meet on the next lecture Let's meet on the next lecture. Like, subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell for future updates. See you on the next lecture. Okay. Bye.